This video introduces the idea of a series and how to find its sum. For any sequence a sub n for n equals 1 to infinity, the sum of its terms a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 and so on is called a series. Often this series is written in sigma notation as a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. Let's look at the sequence 1 over 2 to the n for n equals 1 to infinity. If we add together all the terms, we get the series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. That is, the sum of 1 over 2 to the 1, that's 1 half, plus 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 fourth, plus 1 over 2 cubed, 1 eighth, plus 1 sixteenth, plus 1 thirty second, and so on. But what does it really mean to add up infinitely many numbers? How can we figure out what this infinite sum equals? Well, to start out, we could add up finitely many at a time. Let me write down the first half dozen or so terms, that is the a sub n's, and I'll keep adding more and more of them together, one more at a time. If I just add the first term, well, that's just one half. Now I'll add the next term on, that gives me a sum of 3 fourths. If I add 1 eighth to that, my sum goes up to 7 eighths. And then I'll add the next one. I get 15 sixteenths. And so on, just adding one more term each time. This process of repeated addition gives me a new sequence down at the bottom that's called the sequence of partial sums. And it's usually denoted by S sub n. So the first term in the sequence of partial sums is S sub 1, just adding together the first term. Here's a second partial sum, S sub 2, adding together the first two terms. S sub 3 means add together the first three terms, and so on. Let me contrast the sequence of partial sums with the sequence of terms that we started out with, those are denoted a sub n. So here's a sub 1, the first term, a sub 2, the second term, and so on. Although I can't physically add up infinitely many numbers, I can observe that as I add up more and more numbers, my partial sums are approaching the number 1. That is, the limit as the number of terms I add up, n goes to infinity of the nth partial sum is equal to 1. So it makes sense that if I could add up all infinitely many numbers, I should get an exact sum of 1. The sum of this infinite series is 1. In fact, for this particular series, there's a nice way to say that, see that the sum is 1 using geometry. If I draw a square with side length 1 and fill in half of the square, that gives me an area of 1 half. Now if I draw a line here, that gives me an additional area of 1 fourth. Here's an area of 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and if I keep spiraling in here, I keep adding areas that exactly match the terms of this series. In the limit, I'll have filled in the entire square, which has an area of 1. In this example, we found the sum of the series by evaluating the limit of the partial sums. And in general, this is how we find the sum of any series. For any series, the partial sums of the series are defined as the sequence s of n, where s sub 1 is equal to just the first term a sub 1, s sub 2 is equal to the sum of the first two terms, a sub 1 plus a sub 2, s sub 3 is the sum of the first three terms, and in general, s sub n is the sum of the first n terms. I can also write this in sigma notation as the sum of, say, k equals 1 to n, of a sub k. I'm using a different letter k here as the index just because I'm already using n to represent the number of terms that I'm adding up. 
the sum of a sub n is said to converge if this sequence of partial sums converges as a sequence. That is, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the s sub n's exists as a finite number. Otherwise, if the limit does not exist, or the limit is infinity or negative infinity, then the series is said to diverge. I want to emphasize that we're talking about the limit of the partial sums here, not the limit of the original terms a sub n. And it's important to keep in mind when you're working with series that for any series there are actually two sequences of interest. There's the sequence of terms, the a sub n's, and then there's the sequence of partial sums, the s sub n's. It's the sequence of partial sums that's telling us what the sum of our series is. So if the sequence of partial sums converges to a number L, then we say the ser series converges to L, or in other words, the sum of the series is L. Let's look at the series, the sum of 1 over n squared plus n. Please pause the video and take a moment to write out the first four terms and the first four partial sums. The first four terms are a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. So plugging in 1 for n, 1 over 1 squared plus 1, so that's 1 half. a sub 2 is 1 over 2 squared plus 2, so that's 1 sixth. a sub 3 ends up being 1 twelfth, and a sub 4 is 1 twentieth. Now s sub 1 is the sum of the first one terms, so that's the same as a sub 1, it's just 1 half. s sub 2 is what I get when I add 1 half plus 1 sixth, that's 4 sixths or 2 thirds. To get s sub 3, I need to add on the next term, 2 thirds plus 1 twelfth is 9 twelfths or 3 fourths, and finally s sub 4, I need to add on the next term, which gives me 4 fifths. There's a nice pattern going on with the s sub n's here. For the nth partial sum, the numerator is just n, and the denominator is just n plus 1. So the limit, as n goes to infinity of the partial sums, is the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1, which is just 1. That means that the sum of the infinite series is equal to 1. By coincidence, the same sum as in the previous example. In this video, we saw that to find the sum of an infinite series, we have to calculate the partial sums. If we add together more and more finitely many terms, our partial sum will get close to our infinite sum. And in fact, the sum of our infinite sum is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sum.